excellent. Oh. <laughs> wine is passion, just like my driving, Ollie. Absolutely. We could do with a Land Rover. Wow, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? I'm excited. Oh my goodness. I feel as though I've just walked into a niche Italian movie. <laughs> I'll probably find love at this vineyard or lover. Wow. It's like a film set. It is. And the music as well, I love yes. it. Hello. So nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Well, uh, I'm I'm amazed by your home. I think I've fallen in love already. It's I mean, so beautiful. Uh, welcome to our house. It's, Thank it's you. Uh, but this is at the, uh, the uh, old house of my grandfather. So, you know, we are trying to renovate a little bit. So let's go inside. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely in here. I know, it is incredible. Welcome. It's so atmospheric in here, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> it's and amazing. It's lovely and cool. It's yeah. beautiful. So yeah. how, did you, how did you come to... And this is quite a new um, vineyard, isn't it? So yeah, but we are the fourth generation um, making wine here. So my, my grand-grandfather, uh, Luigi uh, De Laini, started to make wine in the 19th century. Uh, and he gave this property to my grandfather, Domenico De Laini. Fantastic photos, aren't they? Yeah, super. <laughs> in, uh, in 1923, when he married with my grandmother, Carmela Vampa. And, um, and the, the funny is that we were one of the biggest wineries of the area, of the Bardolino area near Le Garden, mm. until the 60s, 70s. And then, uh, after the, the death of my grandfather, my family closed the, the winery in the 80s and they sold most of the vineyards. And, um, and I restarted the, the activity, the, the winery in 2011, being the smallest winery. Oh, I see, right, <laughs> in the area. So, so you're now a startup. I, yes, <laughs> when I was 25, 26, I moved to Paris. Yeah. And I was working in a bank over oh, wow. there for many years, for, for too much, for too long. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, but then, you know, banking was not my style. I, I, I quit it. Such a contrast. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I, the, my problem with banking was that I cannot wear shorts in the summer. <laughs> uh, it's no, no, no. And so I said to uh, hello to, to bank, to banking, and I started to be a wine agent in Paris. And then I, I decided to come back to my little village. So I, 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 I moved from uh, Paris to this 1,000 people village. And at the beginning, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> so, so what was here when you arrived? Ooh, a big mess. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. See, but everything was abandoned um, uh, because my family didn't work on the place for you know, almost 30 years. So, you know... So um, a complete um, wreck. Yeah, but yeah. I, was, I was living a, in a caravan in the garden <laughs> for one year and, and my first one has been the garage of my father for... I, I love the contrast, use. being in an office, office so in good. Paris, all smart. Yeah, sure, sure. They yeah. to live in a caravan. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some creatures in there. I can hear some. Uh... <laughs> She's not very good at hills. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever, whenever we vlog, there's always a hill, isn't there? This is a magnificent pear tree, may I say. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a bonsai pear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's strong. You know, it's uh, very small with two peers. You know, it's on. small, but it's got a lot of personality. <laughs> Look at the view of the villa over there. It's beautiful. Isn't, isn't it? it gorgeous? You're so lucky. Ah, uh, grazie. Do you have uh, to pinch yourself every day? <laughs> every day. No, it's true that every day, every day I say thank you. To someone, I don't know who, but <laughs> the most important thing. Do you, you send that? photographs back to your colleagues in the bank? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you were here. <laughs> On Stephanie. <laughs> One more word from you, Oliver, and you're going off the edge of that hill. So, what is it about the soil here? About um, uh, they, all these hills that you see. If you find on the, the Bardolino area are made of a very uh, poor soil, so there's a lot of stones and not so many minerals. If you look at the soil, it's almost white when it's dry. And this is the main reason why our wines are light in color okay. and light in alcohol. And this is the reason why you don't have to produce too much on, uh, in the vineyards if you want a complex wine. So our goal is to have vineyards that are balanced, that are producing the right quantity our grapes in order to have great quality grapes that at the end we produce great quality wine. So how do you stop 
the vine producing too many grapes? There are many steps. So from the pruning, tell it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you, uh, the, so in, in in the winter when they don't when there's no leaves, you're pruning short. Yeah. So they produce less grapes, and then if they are producing too much, you just cut down. Yeah. Here we are on the on the top of uh, the hill where we produce our best wine. So you see, the the interesting of this place is that we are very close to the lake. Yes. With the lake Garda, the, the southern part of Lake Garda, and wow. at the same time we are close to the Alps, so the to the 2,000, 3,000 meters uh, mountains that are over there. And so Amazing. here you have always this little breeze, uh, little wind yes. that cleans up the the, the vines from uh, the diseases you can have. In the, so it's a healthy spot vines. for the vines. Yeah, yeah, but you know, in the past the vines were only on the top of hills. Hmm. Now they they are everywhere because with chemicals and and, and uh, pesticides and etc. You can. Uh, but you don't use those here. Mm, no, no. The the our approach since the beginning has been, uh, but since the beginning organic, and then in 2014 we skipped to biodynamic. That is, um, we could say, a very strict organic. I've heard about biodynamic wines, but I don't know exactly what it is that makes a wine biodynamic. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. Can you explain what is it? Okay, well, the main difference in the in the vineyards. There are two differences in the vineyards and in the winery. In the vineyards is that in organic, you don't use pesticides and herbicides, so it's super good. At least the vines are yes. cleaner. But you can use, um, uh, for example, ferti chemical fertilizers. Yes. Okay. Or other uh, chemical products. And these, when 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 you know when 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 it's raining, they are going down. They're going in the underground waters. Uh, blah, blah. So they are uh, anyway. Uh, polluating okay? mm. and also they, they they stress the vines because they, they they push the vines to produce more okay um, in biodynamic instead you cannot use any product coming from the uh, chemical uh, industry so uh, it, what what we use to avoid diseases is very small amounts of copper and sulfur but from the mines now, these are the four kind of wines you have on the market from the industrial wines the or industrial organic biodynamic and natural wine so um on you know you see these are all the crazy. ingredients yeah this is what you can legally use in in the winemaking okay? i had no <clears throat> idea it was this difference why uh, do you have very cheap wines at the supermarket uh because if you have cheap wines somewhere they had not to spend money okay yeah which is the most expensive part of the of the process is the vineyard mm. uh so the idea of this is to work as less as possible in the vineyards, to have as less people as possible, mm. and as much as much machines as possible. Okay, so yes. to, work, to produce more using machines. This is very uh, cheap. Okay, why do you you can work in this way? You can work in this way because you don't care so much about the final quality of the grapes because you know that in the wine making process you can use all this stuff so you can add things to change Hola. the taste you change the color you change the alcohol you change the uh you use yeast for the fermentation you filter the wines blah 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 there are many other things and, the, uh, and why those cheap wines are always the same because there's the stuff that they use and they uh, when you produce millions of bottles you have to be sure the wine will be the same as last year yes Okay. And that's the way of doing it. Voila. Uh, is this kind of wines safe for for our you know for 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 our body? I don't know. You mm. know, I feel when I drink a lot of these wines, I feel it the day after because there's a lot of sulfites and because there's a lot of other stuff that, mm. that is not so. Uh, um, Must have been a lot in the wines you were drinking last night, Oli. I think. I think it's because you were choosing the wine and you went for the cheapest one. <laughs> That's when Stephanie takes you out for dinner. No, no, I'm joking. She chose a nice one. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Uh, the main grapes are Corvina, Rondinella, Molinara, that are the typical grapes of Verona, the, the, the city here. And, and you recognize it because the uh, it's well, it's not completely round. It's a is you know is oval the the shape. Uh, so and now, this is Corvina, did you say? Corvina, yes. It's seventy percent of the Bardolino wine. It's almost finished uh, to it pass from uh, from green to, to red. Yeah, exactly. So now the the grapes will start to produce sugar in the grapes. That will become the alcohol in the wine uh, after the fermentation. So what we are doing basically now we are waiting 
So you see all the all the bunches are in the in, in a very nice position, not because they were like this, but because we put them in this position. So we passed many times uh, in the vineyards to position it all the bunches and to take away the leaves when they when they were Ready too to much go. inside. Yeah. Yeah. Now at the end of August, uh, we will eliminate all the leaves around here. So um, from everywhere. Get to work, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, let's go <laughs> uh, to array eight, did that. the bunches <laughs> uh, and to keep the all the, the light sun of September. So voila. Lovely. Uh, so when is the picking? Uh, here on this hill, we produce our best wine, mm. so our reserva, our Bardolino Superiore of Brazil. And usually for for this wine, the harvest is end of September, beginning of October. Okay. So it depends on the weather. So you know. How do you know? How do you know the moment? Ooh. Uh, you, I taste. I, I don't make any more analysis. Yeah. Uh, so I taste the grapes, and I try to understand how long they can go, how far they can go yet. So you, when you are at the 20th of September, you try to understand. Okay, the weather is fine. Uh, the, the grapes is still good. They can go farther, or is the right moment? So I taste it. If it's uh, if it's ready, if, if it's crunchy, if it's uh, you know, uh, if you feel a little bit coffee in the yeah. uh, when you eat it, uh, it means that it's ready, so we go. Otherwise, we wait as long as possible. So, so is that is that quite stressful? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I imagine it's like a dinner party. You know, when it's like, is it ready or is it not? You're cooking a piece of meat and you're like, do you I do that a lot for dinner minutes? parties? Do you? Yeah, Oliver? It is stressful knowing whether something's ready or not. Now le uh, every year is less stressful, but I can say that the first five years, yeah, yeah. I, I, it was what, what I'm what I'm doing, what I do. Uh, I, huh? I was not, you know. Now it's less and less stressful, but yes. Anyway, you, you have to imagine this. Uh, I have only one harvest per year. Yeah. So and I will make in total maybe 30, 40 wines if I'm if I'm lucky. So if I you know if I miss one, I miss a lot. Do they all ripen at the same time? So what happens if this bunch is right? Mm -hmm. Can you be sure that that one up there is going to be right? That's the point. You have to uh, to to pick everything when the average is harvest uh, is ripening in the right way. So the, this is the complication of having. So for example, this hill is divided in five parcels. Yeah, yeah. Five parcels means means five soils. Yeah. Five exposures. Uh, uh, five different ways in which the grapes are har 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 ripening. And so yes, that's that, that's why it's it's interesting and complicated to find the right moment to to harvest. When I go in the in the vineyards to understand if it's ready or not, I look to the color of of the seeds. Ah. So they are still very green, so they have to be brown completely. You try to understand the the sugar that you have in there is in the grapes, and then you crunch it. I need to feel a little bit of cof coffee. Oh, oh. And now they are too green. You're creating a masterpiece, isn't it? I, know, I love how you, you think big. This is the sure, wine that will I, change Bardolino. Yeah, it will. It will. I, I love think that. it's already done. I think a little bit, and but it will. You know, uh, we are just at the beginning. Uh, my be my best wine will be my last wine. So you know, when these grapes will be, well, these vines will be older, and uh, these are yeah, still teenagers in a way. I I need uh, some ladies that will uh, will work much better. So uh, don't we all? You need voluptuous <laughs> vines. This is a special grape, this one. <laughs> this is the masterpiece. This is the, the grape that's going to change the future of Bardolino wine. Oh, you just ate it, Ollie. Mm. That still... actually tastes nice. Ah, it's still, I was uh... expecting it to be sharper. Mm. No, 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 it's not sharp. Actually... Me too, me too. We're not far, we're not far. I'll be out here every day, like, checking they're okay. Yeah, there'd be no <laughs> wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might get one bottle at the end. <laughs> You know, all this walking up hills is quite thirsty work, and I think there's only one drink to have here, and it's not water. <laughs> so let's taste the grapes. He's taken the hint. <laughs> I had this kind of distant vision of buying some sort of property that's run down in Italy and turning into something. And this is the kind of place that is just so beautiful. Look at the character. It's insanely perfect. The stone is just, it's kind of glowing in the sunshine. So romantic, isn't it? How lucky he is to have had this in his family. No. And there's so much potential as well, because all of that side you can see. Yeah, it's not done yet. It's going to be done. And I love the fact that there's obviously some great visions going on in there. I love the way you're sporting the mask, Italian style. We've noticed everyone on Lake Garda wears it on the elbow when out of doors. I'm Italian and I'm cool. Actually, I'm not Italian, but... 
I tried to be Italian. No, no, you're totally rocking it all about that. I think this will catch on, sort of mask chic. This is the the same winery my grandfather was using. So here we age our best wines, small and bigger barrels. Everything is French oak. Uh, because our main idea is really to uh, demonstrate that Bardolino wine can be a great wine if you work in a different way in the vineyard, and respecting you know, the soul of the wine. I'm not a huge wine expert, although last night I did try to be an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I did my best. I gave, it a good, I gave it a good shot, <laughs> overlooking Lake Garda. So Bardolino wine is normally quite light, is that right? It's, um, uh, it is, it's a... It, um, more than light is in the last years, the last 30 years, it lost a little bit his uh, soul. Okay. Um, because it's not because a wine is light that is less um, uh, important or less yeah. uh, complex. It's not the alcohol that makes a, a wine uh, great. You know, mm -hmm. the, the most expensive wine in the world uh, is around 12.5 degrees. Right. Okay. An expensive means 50,000 bottles per uh, euros per bottle. So, you know, oh. that's it. it. That is expensive. Yeah, okay? I, I think no. so. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit on the price. A little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. So, you know, alcohol is not, is not the, 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 uh, the core of, of the wine. It's one of the elements. Um, the point is that in the last 30 years here, we lost a little bit the, 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 or the tradition and the origins of our wine. That, yes, is a light, uh, uh, light in color, light in alcohol wine, but it's very fine and elegant, a little bit like it was, like it is Burgundy, you know? Okay. So you, 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 you're not looking for a Burgundy wine uh, if, you, if you like uh, uh, big macho wines, okay? Mm. If you, you are looking for Burgundy if, you're, if you want finesse and elegance, you know? If a wine is less complex and more mass-produced, it will not age well, it will become acidic, is that right? The, the problem is if a wine is producing too much, yeah. Uh, the, it will never produce a great quality grapes mm. uh, and uh, from these grapes you cannot produce high quality ones you know okay. it's super easy to understand so yeah. you have to reduce the quantity in the vineyards yeah. in order to have great grapes that can produce great wines go exclusive that's right. the way forward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these barrels are amazing oh and just to think of all the wine in here i, 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 I love them today when when i am a little bit depressed because I don't know, because market or whatever, I come down here and uh, and I talk with them a little bit, and then I am better, you know. They talk to you. Yeah, in a way, in a way. It's like Prince yeah. Charles with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I like to think that maybe <clears throat> some of these are made with oak from my forest. Could be, yeah, because everything yeah. is French oak, so French you know, oak. yeah. When we had our oak trees cut down, the ones that were about to become rotten and mm. and too old, obviously we kept all of the others. Um, they told me that there are different grades when they buy oak and the highest quality, the most expensive oak in France, that is reserved for making into oak barrels for wine. Oh, you see, I love French. Yeah, I, that's I, a you know, that's, this is the you know, most precious The most important oak. thing is wine. Wine. Then, yeah. all the rest. Second that, quality yeah. is furniture. Yeah, Third so, quality, timber. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, this is why I love French people because in a way, you know, there's, there's this, you know, to be like this, because yes. wine is the most important, most important. And, and it is what I, I learned in, in France in my living there was really this, you, the, 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 it's not a joke, you can't you can, no. you know, can joke about it, but it's not a joke. It's not uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you put the same wine in many different barrels, you have many different fermentations. So at the end, you will have many different wines, even if the initial one was the same. And, and this, when you put them together for, for, the, for the bottling, you will have a much more complexity than, than if, you, if they ferment it all together. I don't know if it's clear, but... Completely, uh, yeah, it's uh, fascinating. Uh, is there a difference in the different types of barrel, or is it the time they, that you leave them in? They are, they are different age. They are different yes. age, they are coming from different tonnelleries, so they're coming from different producers. Yes. Yes, yeah, there's my oldest uh, barrels, so the bigger barrels are for the Bardolino Superiore, uh, our best wine. And inside the small barrels, the 33 small barrels here are for, uh, for the Rosé, for the Chiari. So what's going on in here? Uh, I feel like I get it. It's, my, it's my secret room, you know. <laughs> I, could get, I could get so much peace. Peace and quiet, is yeah, that what you're looking for? I need one of these in my house. When Camilla and the girls are getting a little bit too loud, I can like sneak in there and watch a movie. Oh. So does it go into here 
before the wooden barrels? Or? Yeah, the, okay. they ferment here. Okay. And then they go in the bar. So you have a choice between metal and concrete. The difference between uh, concrete and, and, and steel, for example, it's simple to understand. You look at the uh, uh, concrete tank, it's a kind of, it's a room. So it's uh, 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 four walls, uh, they're very cold, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, when you put the grapes to ferment inside the uh, a concrete tank, these walls, they cool down the grapes, yeah. okay? So fermentation inside a, a concrete tank is very slow. Oh, okay, so it's like this starts slowly, it goes up the temperature, and then it goes down, okay? If you put it inside the steel, um, the steel, uh, with the steel you have more or less the same temperature all outside. So the, the temperature goes up for, uh, fast and goes down fast. Okay, fine, so yeah. usually when you have a concrete, you have much more flavors than uh, in, in, in the wine than when you use steel. And so why don't most people have concrete? Is it just more expensive or...? Uh, it's less, it's more complicated to clean okay. than, than steel. You, you need much more work to keep it clean. Do you have to get in there with the brush and clean it. Uh, that's my my main job during, during the fermentation part. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Oh, can you yeah. imagine? That's like that's like. This is like... why I changed the doors. You know, <laughs> before the before the doors were small, so I could not enter and. Uh, and have to send uh, children in. <laughs> exactly, and now I'm bigger, so I can go inside. That is the most claustrophobic job ever. I think, Holly, you wanted to go in there, so in fact, I think you should you should go and clean it. <laughs> so much into cleaning. <laughs> wine is being called. Oh, oh, wine, wine. Yes, wine. Someone say wine. Let's go quickly, Stephanie. <laughs> this is so cool. We've got like the cool music going. Oh, I actually right. seriously feel like an Italian film. Amazing. <laughs> I have to say, I've been looking forward to this moment since I got up this morning. What I wasn't expecting is just how passionate I found that I was about everything else we've looked at. It's been the most amazing visit and I cannot wait to try the wine. It's the result of so much love. Exactly. And not just love, but imagination and determination and inspiration. So this was the man who started living in a caravan to rebuild this and look where we are now. You know, uh, the, the, this annual is every day there because, you know, I don't want people to come stressed. So if they come stressed, they have to Stephanie, it has to be said you're not looking too stressed. Yeah, no, I think I've already done that. I've already done that. <laughs> it's contagious. It is. I'm loving <laughs> the music, the sunshine. Oh, I just want to stay here. Can we yeah. stay here? Yeah, let's just stay. So we've, we're moving in. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Come on. So, um, a little bit of wine, come on. Oh, yes, please. Yes. So, our oh, Bardolino yes. Superiore. La Superiore. So, um, here we are on a very high hill, a couple of kilometers from here. So what do I do? I'm not very professional when it comes to wine tasting. I don't know, if you want to do it in the proper way, I think the, so. The best is, uh, the idea is this, you first look, then you smell, and then you taste. So you go uh, from up to down, from ice, okay. so, so you, first you look at the color, usually you do it on, on the white, on a white surface. So you look at the color, from here you can understand that it is still young because the, the color around the circle is, uh, is still a, a very a, a nice red. It's not going on the orange or on the brownie. Uh, and then you smell it. First you smell it without turning the, the glass. So if there's a problem, it, it doesn't turn your, your nose down. But, and then you turn a little bit. <clears throat> I'm doing this, Stephanie. You smell it? I'm still turning it. <laughs> I'm an expert. And then you taste it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a life. But first of all, you know, wine is, you know, enjoying, yeah, enjoying life. So it is really good. The technical stuff are just boring, you know, just to, to enjoy it. The wine has to give you pleasure, basta. Wow. And I think it's even more beautiful because we know the passion that's gone into it. What can you I taste, Stephanie? It. Wine. <laughs> really, really good wine. It's light and summery and refreshing, but it's got a lot of flavour. Uh, 
I think that the today's slow service is the most important thing for longevity. It's enjoying life and not feeling stress. Enjoying all the fine things in moderation. That's the secret to health and happiness. Oh, so we're going to try your olive oil as well. Piece of bread on the plate, please. Uh, coming up. Yes. I'll put a piece of bread on your plate, Oliver, as well. Oh, and what is it? you like some bread with that olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. We're truly in Italy, aren't we? This is delicious. Thank you very much. Now, mm. you know, Lake Garda is super well known for, <clears throat> for the olive oil. Mm. Uh, because we have a, a varietal that is called Casaliva, that exists only in this area. And um, and it is a very light and elegant olive oil. It's not as strong as mm. you, the olive oils you find in the south of Italy or in Spain or in uh, or in Greece. We are the first in Italy to pick the olives. So very early, so end of October, beginning of November, when usually in Tuscany or in the other regions where are famous for the olive oil, they, they pick the olives late in November. Um, so we have this elegance again, you know, uh, uh, there's a very uh, there's an interesting link between the olive oil and, and the wine uh, because they are both uh, fine, elegant. Um, there, there's this elegance that, that link the, the oil and the wine. It's probably is the soil, the terroir, the, the place. Yes, yeah, it really is. It, it, it's, it's interesting. As you see, we, we don't filter the, the oil, so yeah. it's, uh, we bottle it by hand without filtration. And, and this is one of the, the secrets, not to say to anyone, uh, of the uh, of, of these oils, um, so good, so good, it's ridiculously good. But now what we have to try is our secret recipe of uh, uh, of vegetables under vinegar and oil. So we invented me and my wife this um, this recipe after a trip in uh, Istanbul, uh, and we put together a Turkey recipe and an Italian recipe, and this is the result, my dear. So the we, fusion, yeah, fusion. make a make a kind of bruschetta. So piece okay. of bread. You let goes down here the oil, voila, like this, and you put it on the bread, and you eat it like a bruschetta. Voila, voila. It's, I don't know what it is, it's just, I could drink that, <laughs> really good. This is my perfect way of eating, just charcuterie, yes, pickled vegetables in olive oil, delicious bread, and, oh, Daniel tying up the whole bottle of wine. And a little bit, yeah, why not? Uh, you know, um, well, Bardolino Super Avresir. This is our um, our reserve, our best wine. This is the wine with, um, you know, I think we will change one day or another the Bardolino wine, because this is the only Bardolino aged two years in Beros. Um, this is coming from the vineyard where we were before. And uh, so always Corvina Rondinella Molinara. San Sangiovese and a long aging in, in, the, in the cellar, in, in, the, in the barrels and in the bottle. This is the most important. After one year in the bottle, we start to sell it. There's a friend of mine somewhere, sorry. You make an appointment. I love Italians. No, no, I don't want stuff from you. You're going to get it. I'm going to get it. Sit down and I think we should all be a bit more Italian. Sit down and drink. Come on. So delicious. I don't know how to eat it with the looking for light. Can I use my fingers? Yes, you can. Because I am looking at the most beautiful setting imaginable. I'm hearing lovely music, but also the cooing of the birds over there. Smelling delicious wine, tasting the olive oil, the charcuterie, the bread, the wine, and feeling that's the last sentence, isn't it? And feeling this breeze on my skin. Everything, all of my senses are just tingling and alive and alert. This is what life is. This is what life should be. Yeah, this is Italy that's fine, isn't it? This is, this is why Italy is my favorite country in the world. So, so my dear, I have a special one for you uh, in the winery. What? They, these weren't special enough? Uh, you will see. You will see, my dear. Ha, ha, ha. No, it's not possible. It's not possible to top these. Seriously, it's not possible. I think we should go and find out. Ah, oh, Oliver thinks there may be a possibility. Let's go and have a look. Always willing Let's to try go. more. <laughs> Unbelievably, we really thought today couldn't get better, but it seems it is about to, because something very special is about to happen. Uh, I, I hope yes. <laughs> um, so now we are, um, uh, we are taking a bottle 
from uh, my personal reserve, mm -hmm. so where we stock the first 100 bottles of every vintage. The first 100? Uh, yeah, because we vintage. number all the bottles, so all the bottles have a number, and so we keep here the bottles from 1 to 100 for every vintage, for every wine. So, and we, but, but, but the most interesting is that we will uh, pick a bottle from my first vintage, from 2011. <gasps> Can you believe this all over? Uh, so, I feel a little bit too honored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. So, <laughs> ready? Okay, can I ever be ready for this moment? <laughs> yeah, let's go. No one is ready for this. I feel my wine train is ready for this. So, <clears throat> the point is you have to find the right number. Allora, I usually ask for the birth of the, uh, no, when, when you were you born. So, I was born in 75. 75. This is the one. Let's do it. So I'm very. So now I'm very thirsty because you know the, this is my first vintage, and when I think about 2011, I think about craziness, about um, um, uh, make happen things that uh, you would thought you were not uh, be you would not have been able to to make them. So it's really you know a special vintage for me. You know when when I think about 2011, I think this place was completely abandoned. Were you and, in a caravan, then? I was in a caravan at that, that, that time. So yes, yes, I think about my father and my mother. They were oh. not anymore here. That they were uh, harvesting with me. So it, it's a very special vintage for me. So you know, the first vintage is always the first. We are so yeah. honoured. Honored. So honoured. So, this is the year the dream started to come true. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Uh, it has been the beginning of uh, of something. We get to important. taste that. We get to taste a dream in its creation. This is so amazing. Thank ah. you so much. <laughs> you, thank you. <laughs> the colour is completely different. Yep. Yeah, but this is a one has uh, nine years. Uh, so Barbara, you know, with nine years, is mm, yeah. it's not usual. Please. It's still very close, so we have to wait a little bit. <clears throat> Sometimes we are drinking. We are judging the wines too fast. Yes. So they are just closed. It's like uh, you are judging people too fast. Uh, um, they are just um, shy, and they and they're not like they they mm. uh, they really are. Uh, so you have to wait a little bit, let them talk, and let that wine talk, Stephanie. Oh, well, here we go. Mm. I'm very happy about this one oh. because we made it in a very artisanal, simple way, and um, it's exquisite. Thank you. It's, it's there's no other word. And it's still alive. It's um, there's a lot of time in front of him, so it's good. It's become very smooth, but it oh. still has all those flavors and oh. Everything is finesse and elegance. There's, mm. You know, there's there, there's no you know. It's not the alcohol or the body or yes. the tannins or the acidity. That's what I mean by the smoothness. Voilà. It's elegant. Mm -hmm. I'm super happy about this one. Oh, Oliver, you stay on that side of the camera. And then there, and there's you this. Know, I'll try also. You, you, you smell this tobacco, tobacco inch somewhere on the back of the nose. This is when Corofina becomes old. It's so kind of you to share this moment with us because that's a really special wine and it's a really significant one to you. Thank you. Well, this is a really special wine. And this gives also, you know, when I'm very sad for something, I open up 2011 to show myself what I've been able to do. How far you've come. Yeah, you know, and, and so that there's no real, that there are limits, but Limits are of more often in your mind than yes. somewhere else, you know. In so decisions, decisions, Stephanie. We okay, cannot yes. possibly go empty-handed. Because they were both great, we're going to get one case of each of them. We need to start so. our own little wine cellar at that lamp, so that yeah. you have some wines there sort of too. Easy wine cellar. Then I think case of each. Okay. This All is right. a great place to start the wine cellar. Right, right. We're starting it here. Really funny counters. Yeah. Daniela, can we have <laughs> one case of this one? Yep. One case of this one. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple yeah. of bottles of olive oil as well. Super. You can never have too much olive oil. Well, but you'll finish it by the time we get back to the hotel. I'll room. be drinking yeah. it, yeah. It's neat. <laughs> <laughs> Vlog seems to mainly be about shopping, but we need to start a, a is it a car? A car, we yes. do. We need to start a car. And I think this is the perfect way to start it. And also, this is my workout today. And if I work out, I deserve more wine later. So it has been a very a real pleasure to have you here. 
You've no idea what a pleasure it's been for us, right, Oli? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Grazie mille, and I hope to see you soon, you know, uh, to Grazie. show you. We're going some... to come back, because yeah. I know there's a lot of exciting developments, and we want to come and see exactly what happens here in the future. <laughs> You've really created you such a special place, so we're really, really happy for you. Yeah. What a sight. What a day to be alive, Ollie. That was amazing. I don't want to leave. We arrived at, I think, just past one. And I think it's now nearly past seven, which I think tells you all you need to know. Just, it was so amazing. It was like being, you know, swept up in an Italian family. Yes, with old friends that we've known for yeah, years. Yeah, chatting away. It was incredible. And this is a man who a few years ago was working in an office and decided actually no I don't want that I'm going to follow my dream and it was tough so living in a caravan I think no money at all he said eating yes. on potatoes and I don't think he was joking and you know he's still got more to do more vision but gosh he's off to a fabulous start and that is amazing wine and he's just electric with he ideas is, and energy, he isn't he? is. The passion that pours yeah. off him for what he does and the fact that he allowed us to taste the 2011 vintage that he made when his parents were still alive who did the harvest with him that brings back so many memories and he only has a hundred bottles of it. That was, that, was incredibly that was a privilege. It was a privilege and it was delectable. It was not only very refined and elegant but it had so much flavour. It had everything that you could want. I, I, I'm blown away by this entire experience. And we've got a little bit of wine to take back with us and to lay down. Just a little bit. But we hope to be back because we want to see his next sort of embodiment of his vision. So the next stage. So we're not sure how long it will be. A year, two years, who knows. I hope you'll come with us, but we'll be back. We definitely want to be back. Yes. <laughs>